How many people have Morgulon's disease? Can I tell you how sick I am of seeing this number thrown up from 2010, 13 years ago? Yeah, I'm pretty sick of it. Can you guess what long COVID, lupus, Lyme, and MS have to do with Morgulon's? Those were all different pages of a website called Stuff That Works. It's a private company started by some Israelis to data mine, aka crowdsource for treatment optimization. So basically people that have a disease join a community and give data about what worked best for them. So let's compare Morgulon's to a few other conditions. All right, so lupus affects 1.5 million Americans. On Stuff That Works, there are about 9,500 contributors. That's 0.63% of people with lupus. If 7 million people have long COVID and there's 11,000 contributors, then the representative sample here would be 0.2%. Lyme disease, at any given time in a year, it looks like about 476,000 people are gonna get Lyme disease. There are about 1,900 contributors on Stuff That Works, so that's 0.39, so 0.4, so 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. MS, about a million people have it in the United States, 13.1 thousand contributors. That is 1.3. So based on what we know so far, our baseline percentage representative sample in this website is 0.2 to 1.3%. That's how many of a total group of people with any given condition you can expect to show up and contribute their data. So given that baseline, on the conservative end, there should be about 200,000 more to patients in America. And on the more liberal end, using the lower 0.2% or 0.3%, there would be around three quarters of a million people in America with Morgulons. Again, if there were only 14,000 people with Morgulons, that would mean that with this many contributors on this website, this was an outlier, it'd be 15.5% representation compared to 0.2 to 1.3%. It's orders of magnitude larger. And you're saying, well, that's because it's a contested illness. You could argue that long COVID is a contested illness. And while we're here shooting the shit, having a good time doing math and stuff, let's talk about delusional disorder. The most common type of delusion is allegedly persecutory according to psychiatry. And according to Wikipedia and whoever besides the Saudis has hacked them this week, the frequency in the general population of delusional disorder is 0.3%, which would be about a million people. And if you're saying to yourself, well, this is different because it's a mental illness, well, no, the range remains 0.2% representation for depression. And again, we see this trend hold steady with schizophrenia. 1.5 million people are thought to suffer in the United States, about 1,400 contributors on this crowdsourcing website for research. So that's 0.09% representative. So we've got 0.09 to 1.3% again. So these numbers are squishy, but it's relatively rational, reasonable, and logical to believe that the true number of Morgulon's patients in America is somewhere between far, far, far too many and a fuck ton too many. And to all the haters, though truly, who could hate me? I just saved you $7,000 because this is the exact same thing that this AI market research shit is charging. I'm sorry, it just makes me mad that there's market research before real clinical research on Morgulon's disease, especially when I know it's affecting at least a quarter million people, but probably closer to a million, and that's just in this country.